Hey guys, this is Nick and I received the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 14 a few weeks ago which gave me ample time to review it and take a look at it and now I, I kind of don't want to send it back because it's a really nifty 14 inch laptop which also packs an RTX 3050 Ti which makes it into some kind of small powerhouse. Just like today's sponsor is a learning powerhouse. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And you probably all know what Skillshare is. You've seen the ads, you know the drill. It's an online learning community where you can basically learn about any topic that you want. Whether it's learning something completely new or reinforcing one of the skills that you already have, chances are you will find something that interests you in the platform. Now, personally, I've been using Skillshare for a while now to improve my video making skills. I learned about better editing, better dynamic editing, better lighting, better color correction in DaVinci Resolve, how to rhythm your videos better, how to organize your scripts better. And I can assure you that what you're watching right now, the level of quality that you have right now would be way lower if it wasn't for Skillshare. So of course you can give it a go for free, but if you want access to all courses, you will need a premium subscription. And fortunately for you, the first 1000 people who click on the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So get over to the description, click that link and start disrupting your habits, start learning something new. Okay, as always, let's begin with the basics. The Infinity Book Pro 14 is a 14 inch laptop. Duh. It weighs about one kilogram, which is really surprisingly light. And it's made of the same magnesium alloy that other tuxedo laptops already use. It feels good and sturdy, it has a very limited amount of deck flex, and it allows the device to be super light, to the point where the power brick kind of feels heavier than the device itself. It's rocking an Intel 11th Gen CPU. My review unit comes with an i7-11370H, but you can get it with a range of other Intel CPUs starting from an i5-1135G7. By default, it comes with the Intel XE graphics, which are enough for most people's uses, but if you want to pack a little bit more of a punch in that device, you can also grab it with an RDX 3050 Ti, which will make it able to play a lot of games, especially with support for DLSS. My review unit came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you can get from eight all the way up to 64 gigabytes, depending on your needs. And storage options range for 250 gigabytes of PCIe 3 SSD, up to four terabytes of PCIe 4 SSD storage. So you can really get some fast, fast disk space. Now it's a really nice laptop to use. The all matte black finish that Tuxedo prefers and that MKBHD wouldn't object to use either is really pretty. The magnesium alloy feels good to the touch and you get that small elegant Tuxedo branding on the back and nowhere else, which I always enjoy, just like the lack of stickers on the chassis. In terms of IO, despite being very thin, the Infinity Book Pro 14 still has the essentials. You get a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that can also serve as the charging point for the laptop and supports DisplayPort protocol, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a full-size SD card reader, and a two-in-one audio jack for headphones or mic. And that's on the left side. On the right, you get a Thunderbolt 4 port, which can also serve as the charging port, another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, an HDMI 2.0, and the barrel charger. Now, to be noted, while both USB-C and the barrel charger can be used to charge this laptop, it only comes in the box with the barrel charger. If you want to use USB-C, you'll have to bring your own charger or buy one from Tuxedo. They have some that you can add to your cart when you order the laptop. Now, the display is the main part of the Infinity Book Pro story though. You can get it with a regular 1080p screen or go for their Omnia 3K display which is the one I got in my review unit. Surprise! Manufacturers always send the best version of their gear. In short, it's amazing. The resolution is 2880 by 1800 with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio for a bit more vertical screen space. This fits the target of business executives pretty well, I think. And this screen just rocks. Although on a 14 inch laptop, you're gonna have to use some scaling if you don't want to destroy your eyes. It can go up to 400 nits of brightness, which is good enough for use outside, and it covers 99% of sRGB. It also has a 90 Hz refresh rate, which makes operating the desktop a smooth dream. Apart from the numbers though, it just feels really great to use. Its viewing angles are perfect, the colors are vivid, but not Samsung oversaturated. It's really reactive, and it has almost no bezels, apart from the top one, which houses the webcam. Speaking of which, it's still potato quality. 
It's serviceable for video conferences if you pay attention to the lighting in the room. This camera array should also include an IR camera for face unlock, but Tuxedo doesn't ship any utility to use that out of the box, so you'll have to install like Howdy or something if you want to make use of it. The microphone is decent enough, it will pick up on your click sounds, but will hide most of the fan noise when the fan ramps up, which is good. It's, it's good enough for video conferencing, you're not going to record a podcast on this anyways. And the speakers are surprisingly okay. I got used to tinny sounding speakers on laptops, but these don't really vibrate the chassis at all. And the sound is okay, you're not going to get tons of bass, but for watching a video, a movie or a TV show, it's, it's good enough. A laptop is only as good as its input devices, and on that front, this laptop doesn't disappoint. The keyboard is an all-black chiclet style with backlight. It's reactive, key travel is reasonably deep, and the keys are quite stable. They bounce back quickly, and you feel that they require a good amount of pressure to activate, which makes typing on that keyboard a really nice experience, unless you really love your mechanical keyboards, but that's not what you get on most laptops anyways, fortunately for your office neighbors. The sound is really nice as well, softer than the clacky keyboards found in MacBooks, but not plasticky or rubbery. It's just a really nice keyboard, and you get that nice tux key for the meta or super key, although I will still say that I would prefer them to use something less cartoony on Linux branded super keys. Maybe just a symbol. Tuxedo goes for the press FN key to activate the actual function depicted on the key, which I'll never understand why it's put as the default. Unfortunately, you can change that easily enough. Another issue is the arrow keys layout with these stacked up and down keys. I'm not a big fan. The trackpad is huge, probably just as big as what you'd find on Apple laptops nowadays. It's covered in glass and it is super smooth. It's still a hinge trackpad though, so you will be stuck either tapping it or clicking at the bottom of the trackpad. It's really, really good. It begs you to use gestures, which unfortunately the new version of Tuxedo OS doesn't have since it's based on KDE Plasma. It's for now mostly just Kubuntu 20.04 with the Tuxedo utilities, but they're working on it to make it more special. Performance-wise, that thing runs really well. Tuxedo has added a dual cooling system with two fans and two heat pipes, even if you don't go for the NVIDIA model, which means that this thing should stay cool even under load. And since the laptop is now opened up, do note that you can open it and repair it yourself without voiding the warranty. So, on Geekbench 5, the Intel i7-11370H got a single core score of 1675 and a multi-core score of 5709. The single core score is really, really good, and for business users that will focus on one productive task at a time, it makes really good sense. The multi-core score is really low and not on par with a Ryzen 7 4800H, which has been released a while ago, but that's understandable because the Ryzen has 8 cores and the Intel only has 4. While running the benchmark, it barely triggered the fans. Not like the Star Wars sequels did, am I right? No? No one? In games, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the integrated XE graphics managed to get 11 FPS at the native resolution of 2880 by 1800 on low settings, which is obviously unplayable. At 1080p on low settings, the integrated graphics pushed around 20 FPS, which is still pretty unplayable. Now, using the Tuxedo Control Center to move to the Nvidia graphics, though, the game ran much, much better. At its native resolution, with all settings too low, it got between 35 and 40 FPS. And at the same resolution, at mid settings, it almost managed to reach 30. Going down to 1080p on ultra settings, it could only reach 20 to 25 FPS, but bumping down the settings to low, it could play at 60 to 70, which is much more into playable territory. So for gaming or just using graphics intensive programs, the dedicated Nvidia GPU does offer a sizable boost over the XC graphics. It makes this laptop a good choice for people who need to work and be productive but also who want to unwind with a gaming session afterward or during if you have your own separate office. Now still, the 3050 Ti is probably not the bottleneck here, I'd say that the 4-core CPU probably is. So you're going to be able to play indie titles and less demanding titles at 1080p or higher, at 60fps or higher, but more demanding AAA titles will be limited by that CPU and the 3050 Ti's performance. Now in terms of battery life, Tuxedo states a maximum of 12 hours, which you can only reach if you're watching content located on the laptop itself. Now, a more realistic estimate from my test is about 7.5 hours, 
with basic productivity tasks, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled and in use, and brightness at 50%, writing scripts, sending invoices, watching the occasional YouTube video in the background for music, just regular basic productivity stuff. This laptop starts at 1165 euros, including 20% VAT. For that price, you get the 1080p screen, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 250 gigs of storage, and an Intel Core i5. For my review unit, you would have to pay 1805 euros, again, with 20% VAT included. Is it worth it? I'd say yes, if you're a Linux enthusiast. You get a great looking laptop with a small form factor, really not that heavy at all, it's sturdy, it has an awesome screen, great keyboard, great trackpad, and good performance. It's, I think it's worth it, I think it's fair. If you're comparing it with the competition, Apple doesn't have a pro laptop with this kind of graphics performance at that price. Their entry-level MacBook Pro 14-inch is 2249 in France. That's a whole 450 euros more for the same kind of GPU performance, four more cores of CPU, but a much longer battery life if you need more than seven hours. Looking at Windows notebooks, the closest I could find is the Asus VivoBook Pro N7600, which has a 4K screen, but goes when it's not discounted for 1999, so about 200 euros more. Now I think the Infinity Book Pro 14 is well worth the price, with the caveat of the super high res screen, which will cause issues with scaling on Linux. Some programs just don't adapt well to that, like Steam, and the subpar webcam, which still plagues most laptops these days. I could definitely see myself going for this laptop, if only for the on-the-go editing that the NVIDIA GPU offers. I would also really enjoy to see what an AMD version with a beefier CPU would look like. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you didn't like it, just dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you hate YouTube, what are you doing there? All my videos are synced on Odyssey. Go watch them there. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, and you will get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!